Uh, is that correct, Maharaj? Okay, thank you, Brenda. Thank you. Thank you. Om Gyan Timiranda Syankyana Jana Salakaya Chaksu Unmilitam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Shri Makti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pachari Nenye Vishesha Sunyavari Pastyatya Deve Sukarine Panchakalpata Rubis Chakri Pasindupe Vachapatitanam Pavne Vyo Vaishnave Vyo Namaho Namaha Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Ganadhar Sivasadi Gaur Bhaktarinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Continuation after a couple of days of break into the uh, pastime of Krishna with his mother being tied up. And we're getting into the heart of the pastime now. We begin. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Yadasit tat api nunam. Tena yad api sandane. Tad apya nugulam nunam. Yad yad adata bandanam. Translation. This new rope was also sure by a measurement of two fingers. And when another rope was joined to it, it was still two fingers too short. As many ropes as she joined, all of them failed. Their shortness could not be overcome. Next verse. Evam sugeha dhamani yasoda dhanadat yapi gopinam Susmanyantinam Samyati Vishmita Bhavit Bhavat. Thus, Mother Yasoda joined whatever ropes were available in the household, but still she failed in her attempt to bind Krishna. Mother Yasoda's friends, the elderly gopis in the neighborhood, were smiling and enjoying the fun. Similarly, Mother Yasoda, although laboring in that way, was also smiling along with them. All of them were struck with wonder. <laughs> Actually, this incident was wonderful because Krishna was only a child with small hands. To bind him should have required only a rope not more than two feet long. All the ropes in the house combined together might have been a hundreds of feet long, but still, he was impossible to bind, for all the ropes together were still too short. Naturally, Mother Yasoda and her gopi friends thought, how is this possible? Seeing this funny affair, all of them were smiling. The first rope was short by a measurement of, of width of two fingers, and after the second rope was added, it was still two fingers too short. If the shortness of all the ropes were added together, it might have amounted to the width of hundreds of finger, fingers. Certainly this was astonishing. This was another exhibition of Krishna's inconceivable potency to his mother and his mother's friends. Hmm. So here we're seeing how this pastime is unfolding and um, the inconceivable power of the Supreme Personality Works Parasya Septi Vida Haya Sunya Tais for Babiki Gyana Balakriya Cha. The Swaita Swatara Upanishads give us an indication that if Krishna wants to do something, he simply desires. And by his desires, by his desire, that moves his energies to act according to that desire. Parasya Shakti Vihaya Sunya Swabhaviki. So Bhaviki means uh, the, sp the spiritual power 
that is uh, exhibited by his desires. Bhavagi jnana, bala kriya cha. Bhava, kriya, jnana, knowledge, pastimes, all of the energies of the Lord are simply acting under the will of the Lord according to the desire of the Lord. And here we see how astonishing. Krishna is just a little boy. He's not getting any bigger. He's the same size. Uh, a practical analysis is given here by Srila Prabhupada. If all the ropes were tied together, still the ropes were short. And if all the ropes were tied together, there would be hundreds of fingers short. But still, everything was two fingers too short. But Krishna is the all-knowing, all-powerful Supreme Personality of God. Even if he takes the form of the little baby and he acts in that way, his power is not diminished in any way. And the availability of his power is also available to him anytime he wants it at any given situation. Uh, here, he's playing the role of a child who has been naughty and he's uh, tied up. He's going to be, he's trying to be tied up by his parents. So uh, he's giving some fun. At the same time, he's refusing to be tied up. I think we mentioned this before, but we'll, again, for the sake of emphasis, we also know little children don't like to get tied up. And Krishna is exhibiting that same uh, dislike in, in such a way that you can keep throwing these ropes upon me, but I'm not going to get tied up. <laughs> And so, and what's happening, Mother Yasoda, she's working hard to tie him up and she's getting also tired. <laughs> but at the same time, she's seeing that this is something very humorous that's happening here. <laughs> it's inconceivable by all practical understanding, all logical thought processes. But she's, <laughs> she's laughing. And all of the other ladies are laughing too. <laughs> Everyone's laughing. And they're laughing out of astonishment. How is it possible? <laughs> well, <laughs> no one ever thought that maybe Krishna is God in this particular. He kept, he, kept that, he kept that potency of covering them from his actual identity to somehow or other connect the inconceivable nature of what was happening to his position as the Supreme Lord. He kept that hidden simply by another potency. God is all powerful. Uh, we think that, well, I can do this and I can do that and I can, you know, but if Krishna exhibits a certain power directed towards you to make you forget You've forgotten. You don't know what to do. You don't know where you are. <laughs> you don't even know who you are. <laughs> if Krishna wants, he can do that. Ralph said Krishna's power is so great. Just to use a very simple example, he can turn the daytime into nighttime and he can tame, tame, change the nighttime into daytime. Now, we can't even logically figure out what that means, but to speak of how it's going to happen. <laughs> so that's Krishna. <laughs> He's all powerful. And therefore, one who takes shelter of Krishna also gains part of that shakti of his all powerful. Devotees become very powerful. And the more one engages in devotional service, that power increases. What is that power? The power to stay connected with the spiritual energy and not be affected by the material energy. Material energy is subordinate to the spiritual energy. 
both of Krishna's energy and material energy for shishti, shishti, pralaya, shadeka, chayeva, vivati, durga, ichana rupa, apiyas, chastate, san, bovindamari, purusham, tamaham, vajami. Uh, the material energy, shristi, stisti, palaya, it can create, it can maintain, it can even destroy through the power of Lord Vishnu's uh, energies. And material energy can overcome us so easily. Prabhupada explains this like if you go to the shore of the ocean and you're standing on the beach, you see these big powerful waves of the ocean going up in the air and crashing down, but they can't go beyond the beach. God says, you can't go any farther than this. And therefore, that's as far as they go. If the ocean wants, it can, can simply roll in and, and cover the whole city. <laughs> it has that power. It can inundate the whole world with the water in the ocean. <laughs> but Krishna says, no, you don't go beyond this point. Well, Krishna has limited, he's limited the ocean to a certain level. And he does that just like the sun. The sun is rotating in the sky. And even scientists know that if the sun was move, would move a little closer to the earth, everything would burn. And if it moves a little farther away from the earth, everything would freeze. The earth, that, that earth, that orbit of the sun is being conducted by Krishna himself. That chakshara asis abhitav sagala grahanam raja samasta sura murti matesate sa yagya bhavati sambhita kala chakra govinda mari purusham tamaham brajana kala chakra. The wheel of time is, is manifested by the movement of the sun, and that sun is in a fixed orbit. That sun, if it went forward or backward, would cause the earth to either burn up or freeze. But Krishna says, no, this is your orbit. You stay in that orbit. And Krishna's potency keeps it in that orbit. So God is all powerful. So if he wants to make ropes in such a way that even though you have thousands of ropes, and he's no more than a few few feet in, in circumference, those ropes can't go around him. <laughs> to understand the all-powerful nature of the Lord, we get a little glimpse that he, his power is completely. So when we chant the holy names of the Lord, the holy name of Krishna is Krishna himself. And therefore, Nija Sarva Shaktis, as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu mentions in, the prayer of the Shikshastika, Nam Nam Akari Bahuda Nija Sarva Shaktis. Nija Sarva Shaktis means all of the energies, all of the powers, all of the everything in existence is within the name of Krishna. <laughs> that word, that name Krishna, is a spiritual sound vibration, which is the manifestation of Krishna in sound. Krishna appears in his transcendental form, uh, in his personal form, or he appears in his personal form as the holy name. There is no difference. All of his powers, energies are is simply in the holy name. So when we're chanting the holy names of the Lord, we should understand how powerful that holy name is. Prabhupada was speaking about mantra. I was listening just before the class began. He tells one particular story, and it's in relationship to the pastime where uh, Asvatama is being chased by uh, Arjuna after he's trying to flee away, from, after he killed the, the sons of Draupadi while they were sleeping. It was a heinous act, and now he's trying to get away. Asvatama has the he has the uh, Brahmasta weapon. He has the, the what is Prabhupada said, the nuclear weapon. 
So he's running for his life and he's afraid of Arjun. So he decides to throw that Brahmastra weapon, which is devastating. How does he do it? Prabhupada says, these mantra, these, these, uh, these weapons are simply subtle weapons and they move by the power of mantra. So if one touches water and chants the mantra perfectly, that can release a devastating, powerful weapon. And it's so powerful, it goes directly to where it's being uh, directed. In other words, it, it ha has a specific target. It'll go right to the target. So Prabhupada is giving an example. Then Prabhupada tells a story how... Um, there was uh, in college and, uh, in uh, Calcutta. So Jagadish Chandra Bose was going to school at that time. Uh, and uh, some of his friends also, I think it was Jagadish Chandra Bose or, or um, who was the other one? Jagadish, Jagadish. Uh, I'm not sure, but. Uh, one of them very important, he, they were going to school. And then there was two snakes that climbed up into the college. So everyone was afraid. So they called this Islamic, this Muslim snake charmer. And he came, yeah, Netaji, Sucha, Netaji Subhas Chandra Bose. That's another person, yeah. Uh, so uh, in order to get rid of the snakes, they asked this uh, Muslim snake charmer to come. And he simply played his flute and the snakes were gone. <laughs> so some of the boys seeing this, they were wondering, how is that possible? Simply by this chanting of certain mantras through flute, he was chanting mantras through the flute, and the, the, chains, the snakes were charmed and then they disappeared. <laughs> so they were a little doubtful. So they decided to go visit this Islamic uh, uh, snake charmer. <laughs> and so they went and they were asking, you know, how is this? He said, oh, this is simply my mantra. We can, so they were a little doubtful. Well, maybe these snakes, they're not poisonous. Maybe these snakes are, uh, you know, they have no volition of their own. Maybe they're just, they can't hardly move. He said, no. And then the boys were still doubtful. So he decided to do a little demonstration. So he had a basket full of snakes. And so he released all the snakes all over the cart yard and the snakes were running here and there and the boys were getting afraid. And the snake charmer said, don't get afraid. As long as I'm here, they cannot do anything. And then simply by his uh, chanting of the mantras, all the snakes returned to the basket voluntarily. So this is the power of mantra. And Prabhupada says, this is, this. imagine how powerful the, the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra is. This is a material mantra that is being used to accomplish a material task, but chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra is so powerful that one can directly associate with the Supreme Personality of Godhead simply by that sound vibration. So we don't really understand how powerful this mantra is. But then Prabhupada goes on to qualify, one has to chant it properly. <laughs> one has to chant it without offense. So sometimes we're chanting and we're struggling to chant it. And it becomes a difficult because we're still chanting with offense. But when we chant without offense, when we come to that stage, then we can actually, and if we purify even farther, just like Srila Haridas Thakur, he's constantly chanting the holy names of the Lord 24 hours a day. He doesn't stop. And for him, 333,000 names of God it's just a small portion of his chanting. He can, yeah, that's what he, he counts, but he just continues to chant 
24 hours a day, constantly in association with the Holy, with Krishna. So we see there have been many examples with, with devotees who have been connected to the Holy Name and some calamity comes and the calamity has no effect upon them. Either a car accident or being chased, being shot at. So many difficulties have come by way of the, the, the lives of so many devotees, but simply taking shelter of the Holy Name everything and that's just a small indication of the power of the holy name <clears throat> and as we mentioned nija sarva shaktis all the qualities all the powers all the energies everything is there within krishna's holy name it is non-different than krishna so if we make that effort to perfect our chanting <clears throat> we can understand what the power of this this krishna consciousness movement it is so powerful <laughs> It is so powerful and it's so directly connected to Krishna through sound vibration. This is the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He's made it available in such a way that the holy name is <clears throat> so easily available. And therefore, even those who are unqualified, if they chant the holy name, they may not get the uh, benefit of the full name, but they will get some, some benefit. And if they continue to chant and gradually overcome the offenses, then they can experience the presence of the Supreme Personality of Godhead directly, and we use that word strongly, directly in the sound of his holy name. One can experience the presence of Krishna through his holy name. <clears throat> that is the power and that is the mercy in this age. So we see that Krishna is all powerful. And he manifests that power in different ways just to exhibit his pastimes, as we see here. He's having fun, but at the same time, he's also indicating, I'm not getting tied up. <laughs> you can do whatever you want. But of course, then, of course, at one point, Krishna decided that his mother's love was just so intense that he agreed to be tied up. And after he was tied up, his mother left to do her chores. And immediately, immediately he calls his friends and said, get me out of here. <laughs> Untie me. His friends couldn't do it. That's coming up in some of the uh, succeeding verses here. They couldn't untie because it was, the mo it was mother's love that tied the knot. And it's mother's love that can untie the knot. Not the, the cowherd boys are not anyone else except those who are on the same level as Mother Yasoda. Okay, so this is a little bit about this particular Vila here, so sweet. So we should take advantage and uh, try to perfect our chanting more and more because this is the foundation for our success in Krishna consciousness. The holy name remains supreme amongst all of the activities in devotional service. You shouldn't think I have no time to chant. I got so many things to do. Uh, I'll chant, you know, I'll squeeze it in here I'll, somehow or other. Maybe I'll, I'll do some of my rounds today and I'll make them up tomorrow. All of these uh, reasons why not to give priority and exclusive position to the holy name in our life simply are is ways of cheating ourselves from something that is so wonderful. Krishna's holy name is Krishna Himself. Nama Chintamani Krishna's Chaitanya Rasa Vigraha Purnya Sudya Nitya Mukta Abhinna Tvam Nami Namino. In fact, Krishna's name is so powerful, it's even more powerful than Krishna. <laughs> if one commits an offense to the Supreme Lord, the way to get relief from that offense is to chant his holy name. Krishna's name is so powerful. It is Krishna himself. And the in Krishna's power is achintya. It is inconceivable. In fact, it's so powerful, even Krishna, the, 
cannot measure his own power. <laughs> Sometimes we say that, that even God doesn't know how powerful he is <laughs> because he's so powerful. And as he, as, as he continues to exist in his pure spiritual essence, his power only increases. Okay, so we'll stop there. And the message is, Shan Hare Krishna, <laughs> make it a priority in your life and chant with enthusiasm, chant with eagerness, chant in such a way that I don't want to do anything else but chant Hare Krishna, that's all. We should develop this mindset that the holy name is everything. We may like to cook, we may like to clean, we may like to do whatever we like to do, and all these things are nice. But nothing can compare to the benefit that we can receive, both spiritually and otherwise, than chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Thank you. Thank you so much, Maharaj, for explaining about this part of this pastime of Damodar Leela. Uh, thank you, Maharaj. And you also explained the importance of chanting. So nice. so thank you, Maharaj. I request devotees if there are any questions, comments, realizations, please go ahead. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. And I'm Rata Hare Krishna. Yeah. All glories to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to you, Maharaj. Um, so my question was regarding uh, importance of chanting. Uh, importance of chanting, my question was regarding importance of chanting. So you said that uh, even if the person is not qualified they still get part of the benefit of the holy name. So how do we understand one is not qualified for chanting the holy name? Well, if one is still committing offenses, then you know, everyone is qualified in the sense that everyone is allowed to chant. But what makes one qualified to chant is then they are no longer committing offenses. That qualify one to approach the whole the holy name. Before then, one can still chant, and there will be some protection from the material energy. That's all. You'll get some protection from the material energy for those who are still chanting with offense. That's about it. You don't get much any more than that. And you'll get tired of chanting also if you're still chanting with offense. Okay, uh, if we are not qualified, we get tired of chanting. Is it that? Qualified means without offense. But even if you're chanting with offense, continue to chant and try to overcome and eliminate the offenses. You're using, you're trying, you're misunderstanding my definition of qualified. Doesn't mean eligible. Ele everyone's eligible to chant. Yeah. Okay. It's just a matter yeah. of offense. Yeah. yeah. Anyone. This this holy name is available for everyone and anyone. But the host, those who are actually chanting it are chanting it without offense. They're experiencing the ecstasy of the of chanting. Okay, my gosh. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Hare 
Hare Krishna. Any other devotee has any question, comment, or realization? Sudha Mataji, yes, please go ahead. Yes, uh, Hare Krishna. Uh, thank you, Mataji. Hare Krishna, Dhanu Pranam, Guru Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Sala Prabhupada, all glories to you, Guru Maharaj. So, Guru Maharaj, I have a question about chanting. So, while we are chanting, we are committing offenses. So, but if we continue to um, chant, we'll come out of the offenses. Um, so, Guru Maharaj, I'm trying to understand, like, uh, uh, we are continuing, I mean, uh, we are, even though like we are trying to chant and we are trying to like not to commit offenses but still we are in that cycle of like you know chanting of we are committing offenses and we are chanting so i mean like uh, eventually like while chanting uh, will be will we be able to break that like you know continue like you know not to commit it, offenses you should know what the offenses are and you should try to consciously avoid them that's why in our temples we recite the 10 offenses to the holy name every day as part of the morning program okay well but when he would give initiations many times he would have the 10 offenses to the holy name recited we have to know them we have to understand what they mean also and we have to avoid them if we don't know what the offenses are, then we might still be committing them and we're not aware of the fact that we are committing them. You have to know there's 10 offenses and then there's the 11th offense, which is inattentive chanting. So the 11th offense is Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur. He gives emphasis. He says, put your attention on attentive chanting. In other words, Try to overcome your difficulties in chanting by carefully chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra with attention. And he says, if you do that, the likelihood, this is the way it's explained, the likelihood of to commit the other 10 offenses will be reduced by attentive chanting. But still, we should know what the other 10 offenses are in try to avoid them. But uh, working on attentive chanting, and then of course, Bhakti Vinoda Kaur, along with Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati explains, what are the, what are, what is inattention in chanting? There's three forms of inattention. Do we know what the three forms of inattention are? I'll ask you, do you know what those three forms of inattention are? Uh, no, Guru Maharaj. I don't know. And so you should know. One is to be thinking of other things while you're chanting, especially, oh. you know, household chores, children's duties, uh, things that you need to do. In other words, you're thinking about the things that are going on in your life and you're still chanting. That is called, that's called vikshepa. That means distracting distraction but shape of means distract so we're distracted by other thoughts the second one is called aldakshina aldakshina means lackadaisical mood of chanting no enthusiasm inertia these these are the words that are synonymous kind of inertia lackadaisical without any enthusiasm to chant just mouthing the words and uh, there's no real, uh, uh, the mind is, you know, just being dragged along, but it's not even there. In other words, if you use the word lackadaisical or unenthusiastic when we're chanting, and that comes by way of, oh, I have to chant, so I'll chant, but I don't really want to chant. Or... I want to chant, but it's so hard, so I'll just take it easy, not try so hard. Uh, okay, and then the third one is called Jadya. Jadya means sleep. One gets sleepy when chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. So Bhakti Vinod Thakur says, 
if one feels sleepy, one may rise up and walk around in order to stay awake. Mm. But then again, it becomes harder to maneuver at the same time and, and be attentive to chanting when we're walking because we have to maneuver this way and that way. So that can also cause distraction. But then he says, if you still feel tired, even while walking, then he said, stop your chanting and chant later when you're arrested. So remember these things, vikshepa, distraction, aldakshina, uh, laxadesicalness, jadya, sleep. These are the three forms of inattention. Mm -hmm. Avoid these three forms. Mm -hmm. Yes, Kurunath. Thank you. So it's mostly like uh, we have to train our mind um, so, it's, so that we can be conscious of all these things. It's not you, yeah. you have to. You have to learn how to. You have to. You have to learn how to hear. You have to oh. develop the hearing process, oh. where the sound you make in the form of the holy name, you can focus on that, and bring your attention to that sound. Mm -hmm. The mind will follow, mm -hmm. but if the mind is too strong, it will drag your attention away from the sound. So Prabhupada emphasized, just try to hear. Mm -hmm. Hearing is the price. It's, it's chanting and hearing. Chanting and hearing. Continuous. When the mm -hmm. mind goes somewhere else, bring it back to the sound. You may still be hearing and thinking of something else at the same time, but that hearing takes a back seat and it becomes hardly noticeable. And you the thoughts. So again, pick up on the hearing process. Try to hear. Okay, good man. So hearing will automatically control the mind also. So well, it'll bring the bring you into the sound of the holy name, and the holy name will bring the mind into the into attention upon its upon the holy name. The mind will follow mm -hmm. if you hear nicely. Okay, good much. Yeah. I'll definitely I'll try to do this. Yeah. Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, whenever and wherever the mind wanders due to its unsteady and flickering nature, one mm -hmm. should bring it back under the control of the self. When the mind wanders away from the sound, bring it back to the sound. Okay, beautiful. Develop a rhythm in your chanting. Mm -hmm. Learn how to develop a particular rhythm. And if you stay in that rhythm, that rhythm will help you to concentrate more on the sound. That's good. Yeah. So these are some hints that you can use from chanting. Mm -hmm. Yes, good. Much. Definitely, I'll try to apply. Then also, that. also the whole idea of that calling out for Krishna helplessly in a mood of you know that i hear i'm here in the material world i'm suffering please pick me up o son of maharaj nanda i am your eternal servant somehow or other i've fallen into this ocean of birth and death Please pick me up from this ocean of death and place me as one of the atoms at your lotus feet. This is the fifth verse from the Shikshastika prayers. So Srila Prabhupada emphasizes this verse should be and can be applied to the process of chanting. That please pick me up and fix me nicely at, the, at your lotus feet. In other words, absorb me into the chanting of your holy name. So thank you, Guru Maharaj, definitely. So Guru Maharaj, uh, one question is like, so it's a constant uh, um, 
uh, try from like uh, our end, like when we are chanting, sometimes we commit offenses, sometimes we do very nice chanting. So uh, is there a point where we just don't do commit offenses and we constantly like do a nice attentive offenseless chanting? Like you, Yeah, when you get there, you know it. Okay. It's an experience. It's like when you eat, you're getting, your hunger is getting satisfied. You're becoming uh, nourished by the food. And you're also feeling a sense of happiness. So when you're chanting the holy name and your defenses are going and you're attentive, you're experiencing the presence of Krishna and his holy name. Your mind is no longer thinking of the uh, material energy and all of the everything else that comes with it. And you're being spiritually nourished. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Yes, I'll definitely thank you so much for all the nice. Uh, yeah, apply, apply some of these principles and practice. Mm -hmm. Chanting requires practice. It's not just a ritual we do every day and then forget about it. Mm. <laughs> yes, yes, God. Sure. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj. Sure. Thank you for it. <laughs> Mr. Raj. Hey, Krishna. Uh, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to yourself, Maharaj. Srila Prabhupada, ki jai. I have a, a, a question that has been on my mind for for a long time now. Uh, it's, it started from, you gave a a class, a two-part class on a chanting, a japa class at the manor in about February 2020. And, and I found that was super incredibly, amazingly, unbelievably powerful. And I, I put it into practice immediately. And I think, I think they were done on Sundays. And after the second Sunday, the next three days I was chanting in the morning and the evening and it was for my standards certainly it was the most incredibly wonderfully blissfully ecstatic chanting and I was feeling super incredibly blissful all day all night for the next three days and then at the end of the third day I just like felt incredibly sick and then I was <laughs> sick for only a few days and then I never ever ever no matter how hard I tried since those, what, 20 months or whatever, I've never ever been get even close to how I felt on those three days. And I wonder if you can help me in any way, any advice or anything. Don't try for the ecstasy. Just try to please Krishna by your chanting. Yes. Okay. That'll come by Krishna's mercy. Mm -hmm. You can't make it happen. Mm -hmm. well, I was trying so hard to remember what he gave us in those th in those two two workshops. I can't remember anything now. It's uh, it's it's it was probably was recorded. Or maybe I'll try and find the recording. I think it was done with. Uh, School of Bhakti. Yeah. Or what Janaki Nas Prabhu when he organized these. Okay. These oh, projects. yeah, I remember. And it, it was in the barn, right? Yes. In the Goshala. In the Goshala, yeah. Mm. Yeah. That taste is mercy. And that taste is the is an is an inspiration to to again go for you know perfecting our chanting. You know, some we recommend that devotees just take one whole day and just chant. That's all. Get up at midnight and then start chanting and just keep chanting. And if you get a little tired chanting, take a little break, 
drink some water, read, make and also read a little bit, but use the whole day for chanting mostly. You can also have prashadam, but don't do anything else except chant and maybe read a little bit, that's all. Thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hey, Krishna. The holy name is everything. Hare Krishna. Anyone else has any question, comment, or realization? Nandani Radha. Yes, Mataji, please go ahead. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. My humble obeisance to you, Maharaj. My humble obeisance to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to you and all glories to Srila Prabhupada. So Maharaj, I wanted to ask this question and it's related to chanting. That's, you know, when I'm chanting, um, then my mind wavers around and it's not with me all the time. So is it still good to continue or what should you do? Because sometimes I, even when my mind is not with me, I still chant, I keep chanting. So if, well, you're surrendering to the mind, that's all. You have to control the mind by the intelligence and direct the intelligence in the right way. You think, when you don't think devotees struggle, but they don't give up. <laughs> the idea is not to give up. Try to work on it, try to perfect it, try to hear nicely. You remember some of the instructions that will help us to increase the, the attentive chanting where the mind will become less less uh, restless. So, but one thing we can do is that if we are engaging in a lot of unnecessary activities during the day, which causes the mind to be very active in these things, it becomes really difficult to chant when it's time to chant. So we understand that chanting is not just a two hour affair, it's a 24 hour affair, which means that we should be keeping our consciousness connected to Krishna in one form or another throughout the day. Whether we're taking care of household duties or taking care of the children, taking care of our uh, responsibilities, outside of the home, try to remember Krishna and try to keep yourself connected with Krishna in different ways. We can chant verses, we can reflect on that the material energy is simply Krishna's energy and it's meant for his pleasure, it's meant for his service. If we, if we just relegate our Krishna consciousness to our sadhana and then forget about it the rest of the day. And then when we come back to our sadhana time, it'll be very difficult to perform the sadhana. And so try to see that Krishna consciousness means always, <laughs> not just, and remember Krishna, when you're doing service, think that I'm doing this service as a service to Krishna, although I might be taking care of family, I might be maintaining, uh, I might be cleaning the house. This, this is, I'm, I'm Krishna's devotee and this is Krishna's house. Krishna lives in the house in the form of his deity form. So I'm cleaning Krishna's house. I'm cooking for Krishna, I'm cooking for Krishna's devotees. Keep Krishna 
in everything you do. And then when it comes to time to chant, the mind is more easily controlled and more easily directed towards Krishna because we're just continuing that same mood. Yes, Maharaj. That's, that's really helpful, Maharaj. There's I'm so going many to try things. to do that. Yeah, practice. Don't get discouraged, just practice. And practice makes perfect. Practice, just like before we take rest at night, we should always, the mind should be in a peaceful state before it takes rest. And that means sometimes we say we read Krishna book or maybe even chant a little bit just before we take rest or do something spiritual and then end the day like that. And then the mind won't wander so much during the sleeping hours either. It'll be more connected to the self and spiritual energy. All these things support all the activities that we perform throughout the day are meant to support our chanting. Yes, Maharaj. These are just some little hints you could pick up on. Yeah, no, thank you, Maharaj. That's really helpful. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Nandini Radha. Thank you, Maharaj. Uh, Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. I got a one question. Nitai Dattaraj, Hare Krishna. Yeah, no, 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 Why not mind is, uh, why not mind nice to us when we chant? Why it is so, why it's so trouble when we chant? Because you're trying to control it. When you try to control it, it becomes more uncontrollable. <laughs> During the day, you're just letting the mind do go this way and that way. So you think you're controlling the mind. But when you really sit down and chant, then you have to put it under the, under the control of the holy name. Then it gets more restless. It doesn't want to be controlled. But you have to practice. Okay. So like it is all like a Sri Krishna, I mean Krishna's energy, you know. So it is like testing us or some I was in a, some just a... No, it's just the nature of the mind. And now the mind is chanchala. Chanchala hi mana krishna pramati balabadha tasyaham nigamam maye bayoridhu. Chanchala means flickering unsteady, always moving. The mind is always moving. It doesn't stay still. Even when we sleep, the mind is moving through different phases of the subtle energies. Mind is very difficult to control, but you practice and you practice and you become detached from material activities. When you detach yourself from trying to enjoy the material world, then the mind becomes easier to control. As long as we're still trying to enjoy in this material world, you'll never be able to control your mind when you chant. It's not possible. We have to give up the desire to try to enjoy this material world. And we should connect everything to Krishna, as we were mentioning just a few minutes ago. Seeing things in relationship to Krishna, acting in relationship to Krishna. When, when prasadam comes in front of us, do we think, oh, here's some nice food to enjoy? Or do we think, here comes Krishna in the form of his mercy to give us nourishment, happiness, and Krishna consciousness. We have to develop spiritual vision and not keep material vision and then expect 
to control the mind. It's not possible. Okay. Practice. Never get Take discouraged. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, because uh, when we chant, the mind never become more friendly. Just was just uh, wondering and. Uh, <clears throat> Because we're not, uh, we only chanting like Krishna name, you know, so Surya Mim is not, yeah, sometimes just, <laughs> think. Yeah, the mind will go where it wants to go. Practice. Carefully chant the names. Just like I recommend when devotees chant, you chant at, you start off very carefully and methodically, chanting very slowly with clear pronunciation. And as you pick up on the sound, and the pronunciation becomes clear continuously, then gradually the mind starts to become more easily connected to the sound, and then the speed automatically increases. The mind's a rascal. Yeah, we have to really work with it. And if you can chant with devotees who are fixed in the chanting, that will also give you more and more ability to chant nicely. Associating with devotees while you're chanting, who chant nicely. Thank you. Hey. Hey, Krishna. Hey, Krishna. Sukhava Mataji, please go ahead. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glory to Srila Prabhupada and all glory to you, Lotus Feet. Thank you so much for the nice class because this is very important subject matter. Um, the question I have, Guru Maharaj, can we chant while listening to Srila Prabhupada's chanting? Generally, it's not recommended. The, that came to a discussion with the, the governing body commission, and they they discourage that idea. Some temples do it, but they keep Prabhupada's chapa chanting on very, very low in the background. So you should be hearing your own chanting and not focusing on Prabhupada's chanting. Mm -hmm. If you hear Ch Prabhupada's chanting softly, mm -hmm. or you can still hear your own chanting. That's, that's, that's nice. But generally, Prabhupada chants in a, he's chanting in ecstasy. Mm -hmm. And we may not be able to uh, keep con con connected to that ecstatic sound vibration. That is so true, Guru Maharaj. We can't, the vibration, uh, the reason I I like to listen to Srila Prabhupada because the vibrations are really good. I do too. But, when I mm. do other things, I listen to Prabhupada's japa, but not when I'm chanting. No. Mm. I just listen to his japa when may, sometimes when I'm cooking or if I'm cooking or cleaning or something, I, I listen to the japa tape. Mm. But then you notice how much are you actually connected to the sound? You're going in and out of the sound. Mm -hmm. But if we could can stay in the sound, then that's that's perfect. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Uh, okay, thank you, devotees. My obeisances to all the devotees. And we'll see everyone tomorrow for the continuation of Damodar Lila. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank, thank you, Maharaj. Guru Maharaj. Guru Maharaj. Thank, you. thank you, Hare Krishna. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you very much. It's a good day, everybody. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna.
Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, thank you. Hare Nandani Radha. Hare Maharaj. Susanna. Who else do we have there? Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. Um, we have Swaha and we have Vrindavan Nath. So Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna Guru Wow. Uh. Thank you, Jivati. Hare Krishna. We will end the call. Thank you, Mataji. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.